What's up, everyone? We live, day three. Working on this string powered kinetic sculpture. Basically, what it's gonna do is there's gonna be strings coming out of all of these things right here. There's gonna be little weights dangling from these strings, and we're gonna talk about this again, but just for the intro here. All these strings are gonna come through this whole system somehow. They're gonna to attach to this right here. And as this gear spins, this thing's gonna rotate and it's gonna pull the strings in a sine wave, which means that the op opposing strings are gonna be getting longer and shorter depending on what position this right here is in. And as it goes around, there's gonna be 15 weights or like little, we're gonna call them dangly things, hanging from each of these tentacles, I guess, for lack of a better word. And that is gonna create this motion of them moving up and down in this wave all around the circle. So this is where we're at. Day one, we built a little prototype. That is right here. So as this rotates, these weights that are dangling are moving up and down. So picture that times 15 all around this entire structure. And I think it's gonna make for a pretty interesting looking visual effect. And then day two, we got to doing some of the CAD, we got to working on this, this gear system here. And basically where we ended off was, I was trying to figure out how to get this gear to attach to a crank so it can be powered. And I'm still kind of stuck in this position actually because I, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about the, just where the crank is gonna be and like how it's gonna be, like hopefully it won't interfere with the hang, the dangling weights. And I really, really wanna get the crank to come out of the top of this structure here. But if the crank's coming out of the top of this structure, the strings are gonna wrap around the crank eventually. So you gotta, I gotta find a way to overcome this. And so one of the thoughts that I'm having, and I'm gonna take you over to the whiteboard, not that one, it is this one here. And yeah, we're live here. So let's just get rid of this. Let's get rid, rid of everything here. So basically to get this to work the way that I want, I'm thinking that I need to have, if this is the big gear, You see that? Yeah, we can see that. All right. So the string holding part is gonna be like, let's just say here's the big shaft coming out of the top, all the way to the top of the structure. And here's the crank. So the thing that's holding the strings is gonna have to go kind of like, I don't, I don't know, like it's gonna have to be like this. I'm gonna draw it in this position first. So here's the center, here's the shaft. The thing holding the strings is gonna have to be a circle like this. And it's gonna have to be free to rotate on something. So like, let's just say maybe that this gear has like a ring coming out of it like this. And we'll figure out how to make this 3D printable after we first design it. So let's just say there's a ring coming out of that. That's attached to this big gear right here. And this string is gonna be on a ring like this. And this is gonna be able to freely rotate on this ring right here. It's kind of hard to say, to show, but then the strings are gonna come out like this. And so as it rotates, this thing is gonna actually stay like in this orientation relative to the gear. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can CAD this up first and then we can go from there. So. But then the reason why I use SolidWorks as my main CAD software is because I learned it in school like 15 years ago and I've used it ever since and I've just become really comfortable with it. So yeah, like basically like as I mentioned often in these streams, the system of CAD is the same for like any software. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Like 
the way you make anything, you start with a sketch, you either extrude it or you rotate it. You can like loft two sketches together. All that stuff is the same. It doesn't matter what software you're using. So it's the same in Fusion. It's the same in, I really only know SolidWorks and Fusion at this point. Like in any of the free CAD softwares, it's all kind of the same as well. So anything that like I'm doing here, you can basically take and like just with different, basically different commands, like different words for everything. You know, it might be like in um, Fusion, there might be like, instead of rotate, it might be like, I, don't, I think it actually still is revolve in Fusion, but yeah, so the different names for the same operations, that's what it is. Different names, same operations. So once you know one software, once you see how something's done in one software, you can definitely convert it to another software. And that's kind of uh, like the nice thing about CAD. It's kind of like if statements. Like if you know how to implement an if statement in C, it's no different to implement it in Java or any other software language, Python. It's all the same stuff. It's all the same logic. So once you know the logic, you can do it in any software. So yeah, let's go back to what we're trying to do here, which is trying to find a way to actuate this mechanism. So I was trying to like, I was trying to get it to work like this, maybe have like a crank on the side, but I really think when you think about like, like actually how you're gonna use this thing, like how you're gonna actuate this thing. Um, yeah, like I think I can picture myself best holding it like this like on the table and then like cranking it from the top here. And I think that would be a cool way to get the effect. That's better than this maybe. Maybe that would be fine too, but I I don't know. Everything I do is like side crank like this. And I think I want to do like a top crank. So we're going to make we're going to make it happen. So the way that I I come up with these project ideas or product ideas, um I don't know, just like random inspiration this one was inspired by, there's a, a, a guy named Ruben Margolin. And let me let me pull up his stuff so you can see, cause his stuff is really cool. And like, yeah. So this is Ruben Margolin right here. And he does a whole bunch of this like really interesting stuff. Like this is one of like the main inspirations. Like look at this thing. So he uses these strings right here. And as these turn, they pull the strings in this sine wave. This is like exact, an, exact replica, an exact replication of a sine wave in strings. As they turn, it pulls the strings and that's what creates these waves here. So this is like directly influenced by this stuff. And check him out if you, if you haven't, it's really awesome. And yeah, so like, Sometimes the ideas, they, they're like direct representations of someone else's ideas. Sometimes they're, I don't know, like some sort of, there's like, it takes a couple weird steps to get there. But yeah, generally it's just a matter of keeping an open mind and just like trying to figure it out from there. Okay, let's, uh, let's try to make this happen. So the first thing I need to think about is how to print this thing. And that's, that's always an important consideration here. Like if I'm printing something that's rotating, I don't want it to lift. So I need to figure out how to like attach it to this gear. Let's just open this gear up and oops. We can try to figure it out from there first and foremost. So maybe I'll make a new gear. Just copy it. Spur with like rotating top ring thing. I love using really, really technical terms for my parts in SolidWorks. Spur rotating top ring thing, yeah. That was the original. So we're gonna get rid of this because we don't need it. And we're probably gonna have to get rid of the, all like these arms going through it, but we'll worry about that after. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, oops, I actually just screwed that up. Let's do it. What is it, where is this part here? Oh, okay, we'll worry about that after. It's not important right now. First and foremost, 
let's figure out what the, the ring that it's gonna be rotating on is gonna look like. And there could be many ways to do this, so I don't know. If you have any better ideas, let me know. So basically what I want, that, that looks pretty good actually. So we'll go to dimension. I like to stick with like pretty like quantifiable finite dimensions, like stick to the tens, stick to the ones, stick to the point fives. And we're gonna give this a little distance to here. 18 sounds good. And then make sure that it's centered. We'll constrain it. Boom. So black in SOLIDWORKS means constrained. Blue means it's free. And sometimes that just screws up down the road if you don't constrain a sketch. So we're gonna keep it like that. And I just picture this right now as a thin ring like this. And we can make adjustments to it later, but for now that's pretty good. And I, I kind of just build in steps. When I can't picture something, like I just, you know, like I'll, I'll throw this and then I'll come back to it later. Um, let's figure out, this is gonna bug me. Let's just get rid of this error here. And the way we can do that is by doing this. Perfect. Get rid of this. Get rid of this sketch. All right. So for now, I'm just going to hide that and put the new one in. Gear, rotating top ring thing. So we're gonna mate that to the center right here. Make sure it's in the right orientation. It's not right now. Oh, it is actually, perfect. So the reason, oh, I'm definitely going to save this. So don't worry, it'll be on my YouTube page. The reason why, let's get rid of this for a second, just so we can see it. And just so we can get a better understanding of why I need to have this ring. So right now, this thing right here, is where all the strings are gonna be tied to. And that's gonna be rotating around here and it's gonna be able to rotate freely, which would basically mean it's gonna stay constrained. Cause like this string right here is gonna be attached to here. This string right here is gonna be attached to here. And if we go back to Ruben Margolin's page, we can see kind of like what, what the idea is. I'm still conceptualizing this myself, but we're kind of looking right in here. See if I can zoom in, yeah. So this piece that's holding all these strings is kind of keeping its orientation as it rotates. It's not rotating around. And that's because the strings, I guess, are pulling on it. And it's the same on this side as well. So that's, how, that's why I have this thing constrained like this. It's obviously gonna rotate a little bit, but if there's a shaft coming out the middle and this is rotating around that shaft, the strings are all just gonna get twisted around the center shaft. And the reason I want the shaft I mentioned earlier is because I want the handle, the crank coming out of it to spin it from the top. And I'm guessing, I'm just like picturing it coming down through the bottom. It's gonna be attached to a gear, which is gonna be attached to another gear, which is then gonna be attached to this, the main gear that we're working on right now. So, what I need is a piece like this, it's actually, freely rotating around this ring right here. So let's make that piece right now. And I might be able to just copy this one and change it. So let's just try that first. String mount, we'll call it V2. Uh, string mount ring, we'll give it a different name than V2. And so we just need to make this, this I can't remember what dimension I use here, measure. So the diameter is 50. So we're gonna make this center. So let's just change this ring size at its sketch. So we're gonna make this like 65 and we're gonna make this 50.2, 50.4. And that's to give it some clearance to rotate on that middle ring. Hello, Kanu, welcome to the stream. So now we can adjust, uh, that's actually not bad. Surprisingly, that worked out quite well. We'll make it 68, make those gaps a little bit bigger. Let's just see how that looks once we throw it into this system. So we can hide this ring for now. We're gonna insert this new ring that we just made. Um, string mount ring. 
and that's going to mate to this ring here. And we need to flip that, because we need those up like that. And we're going to mate, let's just say for now, the bottom of this to this gear right here. And so this is, well, okay. Before we mate that, actually, we can I can show you with the current mate why we need to, how we need to think about this in order to get 3D printable. So right now it's not constrained, it can move up and down. It can move past this right here because it's constrained by the top of the gear, but there's nothing holding it down. So if we're thinking about how this is gonna be 3D printed, this gear is gonna be printed Pull it open, I'll show you. This gear is gonna be printed with this side down. So it's gonna print up like this. There's probably not gonna be gaps. Let's just take them out for now. I can move this up somewhere here. I'm guessing because of, here, I'll have to do this. We'll just do this for now. So now I want to just take out the holes, which is not working. Maybe that's why. Do that, get rid of this cut here, boom. Get rid of this, you can fix that later. Reconstrain this. Okay, so this is gonna be printing this way up. So this ring right here, which we can now actually reposition onto the top of this right there. So this ring is gonna print up on top and then if I want something to hold it down, like if I have like a, a lip here, I'm not gonna be able to slide the other ring on top. So I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do yet, but we'll, we'll come back to it. Because I'm picturing like the way you build this is you like slide this ring on and then you put like a top cap on that to hold it into place. Maybe it's gonna be I don't know yet, but I do know that now this can rotate freely. And we're getting closer to the idea. So as this rotates, see how this ring can rotate and keep its position. So the next problem with this though, that I wonder is, is this gap long enough and this gap short enough? I think it is to get a, a good enough like up and down of the strings. I think it is. So let's just constrain this down to the top of the gear like that. And now we can, uh, no, don't want that. Don't want that. I want our, uh, there. So what I, I think I'm gonna change here is I'm gonna change this hole to be like right here. So the string is gonna go from here to this hole and out. And then maybe like, I don't know. At first I was thinking it was gonna like wrap and wrap and, and like go all around and create this like intricate web of strings. But I think it might be cool if it just goes through here, maybe like up to here and then out here. And it's just gonna, you're gonna see strings all around because I got this purple fishing line and that's probably the, uh, like I wanted to have that purple. This is gonna be all printed in white. So purple and white is gonna be the color scheme here. So if that's the case, the next question is how do we get, how do we get a crank to go through the center? And I'm like thinking more and more now that the crank through the center might be the wrong idea here. I might be better off just creating a side crank for this. And if that's the case, I want the side crank to come out here. So yeah, okay. 
We're gonna we're gonna rewind a little bit. We're gonna I I like this idea, but I don't think it's gonna work here. I think it's gonna be hard to implement. So let's get rid of this. We're gonna go back to the original. This is the original. We're gonna go back to the original string concept, and we're gonna instead of having this open here. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it. The reason this is open is because I have a gear. Let's see if I can find it. Where is it? Right there. And this gear is going to come right here. And then I need to have some sort of system. To rotate this gear and I'm thinking a crank and I was going to think I was thinking the crank might come out the corner, but then I was thinking like from like an aesthetic standpoint it might be a little bit awkward to have it on an angle like this. I just think it's cleaner to have it like this. You know what? Yeah. Instead of having this on the corner, I'm going to take out these two legs right here. So this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to fix, but it's not going to be terrible in the end. So let's just do it. So we're going back here. So this loft is what we have to adjust first. So we'll start by doing this. This is a canyon. This is an, it's an, a sculpture. So it's an art project. So it's, it's going to help in, um, I guess the appreciation of art and hopefully inspire people to like, I don't know, change what their perspective on art is and what, what it can be and maybe change people's perspectives on who can be an artist and maybe inspire people to become artists. So that's what it's gonna be helpful in. So sometimes with uh, like CAD stuff, you have to like, you have to put the time into test things and it, it can be kind of frustrating sometimes when you when you don't do it right the first time, you know, to have to redo it, but it just is what it is. And it's for from the creative standpoint, it's very important to, to get the aesthetics you're looking for right. Because that's like a huge part of what art is and as an engineer, I don't spend a lot, enough time thinking about aesthetics, but as an artist, I spend, that's where most of my time goes into. So there's a balance that I have to strike here between the way it looks and the way it functions. And so that's always a challenge, especially because I spent a lot, a lot of time just trying to get it to work from an engineering standpoint. And then to learn how to put design and you know thought into the aesthetics into things, it's definitely part of a, a larger learning process, which I'm still working on. You know, it's funny because I spent a lot of years working with industrial designers and like they're so aesthetic focused. And I was like always like, oh, like, those darn designers don't know. They don't know under, understand anything about how anything works. But then you realize that, uh, yeah, their job is not that easy. It's not as easy as an engineer once would have thought. This engineer once would have thought. Okay, so now we got to... Uh, Basically what I'm trying to do here, let's do it. I did it the wrong way before. So we're gonna do it the right way this time. So if I use this surface right here, split and cut these two bodies. And we're gonna keep this and keep this. We can delete these two segments right here. This one and this one. Did our music die? Is it already done? It's already done. Let's put on another playlist. Uh, how about travel like a local? How about viral essentials? Happy euphoric music, love it. All right. So what these are going to do then, if I um, isolate this for a second, 
And I can draw like a little. Section that comes out the bottom. First, I'll make a center line. And I'm going to hide this plane because it's getting in my way right now. This is going to come down. I'm going to make a little tab. So one thing I, I really like to do is just keep everything like symmetric and there's not really a good reason for it. it just every designer has got their little things. That's too big. This has got to be like it's still probably too big. Let's see. These are collinear. I can bring it in. So I'm really just making a tab right now to when you push it in, it's going to flex in and then push out against. I'll show you when this is done. You'll understand. You'll get it. Okay. And I'm going to add this to give it some room to flex. Let's get our dimensions right. So I'm using point 0.8 here. And the reason for that is I'm printing with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So when I print around here, I'm gonna get two lines of filament and that should be good enough for this. And I'll use 0.8 here as well. And then this can be some arbitrary value. Make it 1.5. This is gonna be total thickness. Let's go with like eight. That's good enough for me for now. And then this we need to give a value to here to constrain it. 2.5 looks great to me. Now we can take that, mirror it, extrude it up to the surface right here. And then when I zoom out, you're gonna see what I'm trying to do here is, so right here, basically the same thing that I did here. So these, as you push them into the base, and I'll show you the base, has these holes in it. As you push them into the base, these are gonna flex in and then pop out, and that's gonna hold it nice and securely in the base. And the reason I'm designing like this is, I'm trying to design everything so it's fully 3D printable. No screws are required to put this thing together, nothing else, it's just a fully 3D printed design. And so the thought process for here, and I'll show you what this gap is for. This gap right here, and I'm gonna get rid of these two holes, but this gap right here is so I can have space for this gear, which is then gonna be connected to a crank that's gonna come out here so you can actuate this whole thing. And I think that that's gonna work well. I actually think what I'm going to do is probably take this big gear out and just do the whole gear ratio on the side panel here. We're gonna to get to that. For now, let's finish doing this. And we'll go back to the gear design. So I just need to repeat that onto this right here. So let's just figure out. You can copy that, paste it onto this wall. Let's isolate this first. And then we can reposition it, make sure everything is happy. So you can see right now the sketch is blue. Once I get it all constrained, it's going to not be blue anymore. And this, I don't know where that's constrained to right now. Let's try this again. I'm gonna guess that it's this. If I bring that down, boom. And I bring this here, boom. Now it's all black. And that means we're constrained. That means everything is good to go. So let's extrude that to the other side. Oops, did that wrong. Finger slipped. I'm gonna go up to this surface here. Boom, nice. I don't know why that's not merging. Let's get it to merge. Boom, 
And perfect. So now we gotta just make the holes in this piece right here. And I first want to just extend this piece out a little bit, just to have some room. So I just had another thought because I wanted, it'll be fine. I might just have to move this. I'm gonna move this down a little bit, just a touch, but let's see first, cause I think, let's just take this out for now and the sketch. And then this doesn't need to be as tall, but we'll figure that out after. What's your problem? I see what your problem is. Don't need that. So let's just find the bevel gear, which I have here. And it's attached to that, but we're gonna attach it to this gear right here. Boom. So that's gonna come like here. The other bevel gear is gonna come like, and we'll get this all sorted out after. Somewhere like here. So that looks like it's gonna actually work quite nicely. And then we eliminate the need. I was gonna have a whole gearbox system under here, but I don't need it because we, I think we get enough of the we can get enough of reduction through this gear system here. So basically it's gonna be like, we're gonna be holding it like this, like when it's on the table, and you're gonna crank it like here, and that should be out of the way enough, hopefully that it doesn't interfere with the, the, the weights moving up and down. And we're gonna get to those weights soon, but let's just finish this gear system first, and then we can, we're, we're, we're getting pretty close. I actually think we're gonna be finishing this project today. Thanks, Evan. Appreciate it, man. I don't know who Ravana is, the mythical creature, but you know what's even more interesting right now is I think I don't need to even crush two of these. I think I only need to crush one. And I believe that's gonna make it actually way easier to assemble and just more, more structurally sound. So which one do we want to crush? Maybe this guy right here. And yeah, this is more of the process. You too, Evan, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for checking in. And this is more of the process of just design is like doing work, undoing some work, doing some more work, undoing that work. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just part of the process and it's important because this is the creative process when, when it's nothing in my head. There's only so much that I can picture in my head. And then you start drawing it out and then you start designing it. And as you do that, you kind of learn things that you didn't realize and, you know, things that you just didn't foresee. So that's kind of where we're at right now is we're just like, I didn't really foresee how I was going to do this whole part of the, the process here, this whole system, but you know, just is what it is. And I guess you gotta be up for the process of design. So let's go back and make this change. And this is the last time we're gonna have to do this, but it shouldn't be that hard to do. So we need to go to these lofts, right? This loft right here, we need to adjust these sketches. It's pretty easy, you're just gonna do this right here, go to there instead and delete all of these lines. Just try to get this to attach to these edges here. Boom. And then we're gonna have to do the same thing with the next one. Yeah, it's definitely exciting to, to print something. So I, I'm looking forward to this because I think it's gonna be done today. We're gonna throw it all on the printers tonight and then, yeah, it will be um, probably ready to assemble tomorrow, which will be a good time. So I guess what tomorrow's stream is gonna be.
Okay, so it's currently not happy. Why not? Weird. That's why. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this split right here, I need to adjust that now. So we're only splitting one. Let's adjust that now. Now we can adjust this. No, that one's fine. We need to delete this. And now we only have to extend this one side. We can delete this split right here. We don't need that anymore. Okay, sweet. So now I'm gonna just sketch on here. And basically just like take this line, this line, and this line, offset them. How thick do we want to make it? That is the next question. Okay, that didn't work for whatever reason. Just isolate this first. It's not letting me. Now we can do it. And then I guess we're sketching which... You should be able to isolate after you open a sketch. I don't know why it's not letting me do that, but... There. It's really this line right here, this line, and this line that we need. All set. Don't really understand that, but maybe we need to just... Oh, because it's going the wrong way. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. I guess we just take this. This. Maybe we want to isolate this body now. I never used to use these isolatings functions, but it makes life so much easier. Okay, now we can trim this off. Boom, boom, boom. And then we can just extrude that out to the top of this. And then it's all gonna make sense what I'm doing right now when I go here. I actually need this sketch right here. So I'm gonna, where is it? This guy. So I'm gonna sketch. And take this and offset that. And we're gonna go with 0 0.2, cause like we want it to be a pretty tight fit. When this slides down into this. Okay. And we're gonna go with offsets here. Offset from surface here. We're gonna stick to 0 0.2. This may be too small, but We'll be able to adjust it later if we want. This one, we're gonna go 0 0.2 in the other direction. And we're gonna make sure that it is, oops, line 0 0.2. And we're gonna make sure over here that we are only cutting this body. So now if you look at what we have, we have this hole here that this right here is gonna fit into perfectly. So that's gonna snap into that. So the next thing we need to do is another snap on this side here. And just, just, so, just so like it makes sense, the way that I'm planning to print this is like this. So I'm gonna have to adjust this right here because that's not gonna be able to print this right here. But we'll fix that. I also just think that this is too excessive. So maybe we need to make this like 2.5, that's probably good. And in order to overcome the printability, because this is gonna be flat on the bed and it's gonna print this way, I'm just gonna add like probably a chamfer here. And we'll make it big enough that it gets the whole thing. 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, boom. And that'll print no problem now. And it looks okay from this perspective. And you know what, I actually think I wanna put the chamfer on the other side because I really like how it looks better than just the sharp corner. It looks a little bit more smooth. So that's perfect. 
and that's printable. So the next thing is this top part right here is going to snap into this leg right here. It doesn't even need to snap. It ah, uh, does it need to snap? I think it doesn't need to snap. Is Lazy J talking? But I also don't want to have to like extend it out. So maybe we'll make it a simple snap. Let's make it a simple snap. It's also, uh, you know, we're gonna make it a press fit because it's going to, um, it's gonna be printing this way. And when it prints, so when it prints this way, the printer is gonna come around here, print this in this way, in this line. And that's the, actually the strongest orientation. If, when I print it in this orientation, the printer is gonna actually print this in layers and those layers are not as strong. So if you try to flex them, they're gonna break. So that's why I'm gonna use a strong fit here. So Lazy Dre is um, being justified by, I guess we're gonna call it Logical J. So that's always lucky when that happens. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just let me know, <laughs> try to be more clear. But yeah, if you guys are watching, you have any questions, feel free to ask. I am happy to, to answer, talk about anything you want. So, so I'm just here catting. Luckily while I cat, I've been doing this long enough, I guess, that I can cat and talk at the same time. And sometimes it even makes sense what I'm saying. Let's see how this looks. Why is that the case? We're good. Okay, and I want, I want the distance between this side and this side to be equal. So I could dimension both sides. I think it's easier to do it like this in case we need to make a change down the road. And I think that's actually a really important thing is to look out for future designer in you. The clicking, is it coming from my music? Let me know if like, does that, does that fix the problem? Is that fixing the problem in the, in the mic? Let me know. If not, we can try unplugging and replugging. It might just be the, the, the song was kind of clicky. Let's make that go out five, I believe. So that tab right there is going into this guy. So now I need to sketch. We're gonna to try to get this isolated. It's kind of frustrating that I can't isolate that way. I'm gonna isolate like this. And then we're just going to offset this guy. 0 0.25, good enough for now. And now we can cut that out. And it looks like that's a little bit big. And then the fuzz is from the mic. Okay, let me see if I, um, let me see if I unplug it. Where's my mic going to? Unplug it, plug it back in. Yo, all right, did that fix the mic clicking problem? If we put the music back on. Let me know. I wonder if this is interfering with the mic. I doubt it, but maybe it is. If that doesn't work, we're gonna, I don't know, we'll try to figure something else out here. Yes, the problem is fixed, Jake. Amazing. The old unplug and replug. Okay, so let's finish what we're doing here. So we're just gonna cut this out and we're gonna make sure we're cutting this piece right now. And so there, there it is right there. And I think I wanna make this a little bit smaller, so I'll just increase this dimension. Boom, and that should work. So the, the process here for putting this together is I'm going to take this, slot it into this guy. These are gonna slot down into the base and then I'm gonna put this guy in and then we're gonna put the top cap in 
and that should hold everything in place. And my intuition is telling me it's gonna work, but it might not. And that's when we go back to the drawing board. We might have to put in some sort of other support here, but for now, I think we're good. So let's finish working on this right here. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit that comes out of here. And I think I'm gonna have the mount for this bevel gear part of the base just because it will make it a really solid mount. And that bevel gear is gonna be attached to a gear. Let me pull something out to see. So it's, I'm kind of using this design right here. So the bevel gear, there's just not gonna be a shaft attaching the two of them, but the bevel gear is gonna be attached to a gear, which is gonna be geared down to like, it's hard to see. Geared down to this gear right here. And that should combine with all this gear ratio here because this is a, a small gear going to a big gear here should give us the gear ratio that we want. Okay, so let's do that next. So I guess we're gonna have to constrain this gear into place. And maybe we're gonna do that by actually making, so that we can get rid of this, sweet. Just saved ourselves like five hours of printing. It's always fun. We can get rid of this cut here. And this cut right here, we're gonna move to the side. So we can get rid of this, put it like here. It's actually gotta go in line with this guy, I think. Let's just see first. Is that the right one? No, it is not. These are just adjusted sometimes in the actual assembly. So we're gonna adjust the sketch. It's gonna come all the way here. And then, now we can make that a cleaner, more constrained hole. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna constrain it on this line right here. So I'm gonna create this construction line to the center of this hole. And this is gonna be on that construction line. Coincidence, boom. And then I'm actually gonna get rid of this now. So we don't need it. And maybe, maybe, I wanna do it like this first. So I actually have to do this. If I wanna do it in this order, I have to take this sketch, absorb it, unabsorb it, and put it here. Come on. Okay, never mind. We're gonna find a new way to do this. Rather than constraining it to this hole, because you can see it's gone now, what we're gonna do is make a construction line from here to here, and this is gonna constrain to the center of that. Boom. So that should be perfect, and now we can get those fillets back and get rid of this sketch, and let's go see how that looks. Beautiful. So now I can take this, I can constrain it to this hole. And actually it's not gonna need to go all the way through, but we'll fix that after. It didn't work. Concentric, that's what we need. Doesn't like that, but because it's something else, some other problem, but it's all good. Let's figure out what the problem was. Fixed, now we can make this a little bit smaller and 
You know what? Now I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we're gonna turn this into a compound bevel spur gear and we're gonna print it like, you can print it this way. So it's all one piece. It makes it really easy to assemble later on down the road. So let's do that. What I'm gonna do that is I need this bevel gear. I believe I'm going to just save it as a second bevel gear with a hole. Bevel with a hole. And now we go to this guy and we can delete this. And we can delete this, I believe. Nope, we still need that, just less. So we're gonna make that, I don't know. We'll see, Let's see how that looks. And we can go insert, oh, we actually have to go back to this bevel gear with hole. I need to get rid of this center hole. this into a 9.4. I use 9.4 because all my shafts are nine and the 0.4 gives you a perfect clearance. Can you, I, I'm trying to finish this today and I think I will actually. I think I can finish this before even the live stream is up at two. And if I don't, maybe I'll come back and finish the stream a little bit later on after I eat some lunch. Or we'll just go, we'll go until it's done. I think we can do it. It's a little bit of a marathon, but I think we can make it happen. Okay, insert part. We need that bevel gear with hole. Now we can constrain everything like that. Add, constrain this to this, add, and just like always keeping in mind how this is gonna print. Because these are 45 degree angles, if I print it this way, those overhangs are gonna be fine. And it's nice to print it all as one piece, which is great. So now we can combine them. Boom. And let's see how that looks in, we can close this for now. Let's see how that looks in here. Get rid of this. And I'm also going to finish the base here and make a shaft for that gear. So this cut right here is gonna go to here. Nope. Gonna adjust this up to the surface. Like that. Now I'm gonna put a little flange in here. So it's not, uh, does it need it? Yeah, it needs it. And we'll make it uh, 12 and a half probably is good enough. One millimeter flange. That's just so the gear isn't sitting flush against the surface. We're just trying to reduce some of the friction here. And then we can make a shaft for that gear. And like I mentioned just before, all my shafts are nine millimeters. And the holes are all 9.4 and that gives you like a pretty good clearance for spinning and it works on most people's machines, which is a huge part of what I design for is that anyone who has a printer can download these parts, put them together without any additional tools. And uh, I'll, sh I'll do some of the finishing touches probably on my own, but because it's, it's boring to see like the C-clamp being put in place, this is way more fun. But yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's just hide this so we can see this gearbox coming together. So we make this transparent. So you can see this gear connects to this gear. This actually, what is that constrained to right now? It must be constrained to the bottom. So this is sitting on the flange here. The shaft is gonna come up through the center, which we're gonna adjust right now. But let's first figure out how big we need to be. 
18.33. That 3.33, I, I hate it. It actually bugs me so much, but it comes from this bevel gear. I guess I can adjust, you know what, we're gonna do it just, just because. If I open this part, Hmm. The best way to do it might be like this. Move that 0.33 this way. And then I have to move that also. And now it should be 18 millimeters. Love that clean number. Okay, so that means now we can make this shot. Nope, this one. Nope. Oh my God. The shaft right here, 18. And then I always make it 0.1 a little bit more just to add a little bit of space for clearance. That's gonna print beautifully just like that. And then, you know what? Just, just so you guys can see my process for it, I'm gonna put the C-clamp on the end. So the way I do it is I my C clamps, let me pull one out for you so you can see. So if you don't, if you've never seen any of my stuff before, this is how my shaft ends look. They have this little groove in them. And then this is a C clamp right here. And that's all 3D printed and that snaps on. And it does a really good job of holding things in place without using any fasteners. So the way that I make them is once I have my post at the right height, I just create a sketch on that post, convert that entity into a circle. So you get the sketch off the top of that circle, extrude it up 0.75, and I give it a draft. So that's where the 45 comes in. Now I give that a draft the other way, draft outward, boom. And then I top it off with another 0.75 and boom, that's it. Easy. It does use a lot of operations, but it doesn't matter. Like CAD is fast enough these days. These extra operations don't matter and it just becomes really easy. Like I used to do it where I'd make a, a plane and like rotate this around and it just became way too cumbersome. This is so much easier and I normally just have to go around at the end and just like add these to the end of every shaft. I bet there's probably a way to do a macro to do this. I don't know how to do it, but I should probably learn. If anyone knows how to do it, let me know. Retaining ring. Yeah, it's probably a retaining ring is a better word for it, but I call it a C-clamp because it is in the shape of a C. So yeah, it is a C. It's a C-shaped clamp. And that's just my engineering term for it. What is up, El Mario? Welcome back, dude. It's good to see you back here. Back on stream. So let's uh, go back to the assembly here and then we can see how this looks. So that looks pretty good. Let's make sure there's no interference there. And then now what I wanna do is bring this down as far as possible. So let's see what this gap is right here from here to here. is 5.65 millimeters. So I'm gonna to try to bring it down maybe three and a half, have enough clearance, but yeah. So this is all dependent on this plane, I believe. Yeah, I'll go back and I'll show you again. But let me just uh, bring this plane down first and then, so we'll just bring it down minus 3.5, boom. And uh, that's gonna just help with the whole placement later and how much like pull we get basically, which will make sense, probably make more sense when the thing's done. Okay, so we'll do it again on this cause I have to do it here anyways. So sketch, convert that entity to a circle, extrude the draft. It always drops inward automatically. Do that top. And then here's the opposite draft. You just hit this right here, draft outward. 
and that gives you the opposite draft. And because it's drafting outward at the same height and the same angle, it ends up being this perfectly aligned. No problem. So there it is there, done. So, okay, so the next thing we need to make now is some sort of like system to hold this gear. And I'm going to make probably another gear coming out of that. Hmm. Do I actually want to make this a compound gear as well? Maybe I do. So when you go small to big, you're, you're decrease, you're, you're increasing your torque, but you're losing speed, which is fine. We don't need speed here, but we need more torque. So that's why I'm going from this small gear right here, which I believe is 15 teeth, to this big gear here, which is 100 teeth. So every time I crank this gear once, let's figure out what that gear ratio is, because we're gonna need that. This is 15 divided by 100. 0.15. So every one crank of the crank right now, I'm going to get 0.15 turns of this. And I want it to be smaller than that. So if I add, so I'm going to write it down here. We'll, we'll figure out the gear ratios here. Yeah. Boom. Okay. So. So right now I have 15 to 100. So the question is, what is this next gear ratio gonna be? This is 0 0.15. This next gear ratio, even if I do like one to three, 0. Point... Sometimes I need a calculator to do stupid math. So, okay, 0 0.333 multiplied by 0 0.15 gives us a 0 0.05 total ratio. So that would mean if I use the same 15 tooth gear, because I already have it, I need a 45 tooth gear. Is that right? Yeah, 15 times three is 45. A 45 tooth gear coming out this side. So I'm gonna have a 45 tooth gear attached to this bevel gear, a 15 tooth gear attached to the crank, and that's gonna look sort of like this right here so this gear ratio right here is this is i believe a 30 tooth gear this gear right here is a 10 tooth gear and that gives us a three to one or one to three ratio before we go down into the shock which then converts later and that's to run this right here which actually works quite well so i think that this gear ratio is going to be good it's quite hard to say exactly how much force is needed, but I think what I'll do is I'll just make it, I'll make it this ratio for now. And then, I don't know, if it, if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll make the iterations. There's always iterations when it comes to this stuff. And it's hard to say right now, cause like I don't always have the best feel for it, but it's good enough for now. So let's uh, get this the second gear. We need a 45 tooth gear and I believe I'm going to my gear library that I created. Grab a 45 tooth gear. Let's uh, save that. So this is gonna actually have to have a hex on it, but we'll do the hex later when we're does it need a hex? No, it's not gonna need a hex. It just needs a circle. This is attached directly to the bevel gear. All right, this is good, it's easy. 9.4, we're gonna cut it in half, cut it through the center. Let's see, this gear right now is four millimeters. We're gonna make it a little thicker. Not that much thicker. Make it to six millimeters total. And I'm gonna get rid of this link. Get rid of that, yes. And then now we can go to this bevel gear. And we can attach that 
to this bevel gear, which we don't need to have this hex anymore. We just need a circle there. Okay, let's do that first. Beautiful. And I'm also gonna make this as small as possible. See if that's a nice round number. 6.67. Perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna add that gear we just made to this part because we want it to all be on the same, as the same piece, 45 toother. Align the centers first. We're gonna align these faces second. And we may make this gear a little smaller, but for now it's fine. And now, boom. So, now we're gonna have to make the thing that holds this gear in place. And we're gonna have to cut out here so it's not in the way, that's fine. Okay, let's uh, maybe we'll start by getting this gear aligned and we can constrain to this gear. So let's hide this. And how are we gonna align this gear? I think what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna create a plane. First, I'm gonna create an axis here. Then I can create a plane off that axis that is parallel with this Plane, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's my plane button, parallel. So now we can use that plane and then I need to put an axis on this. There is one, perfect. So we're gonna just grab this plane we just made. Boom. And then on this bevel gear, this axis, and we can constrain those first. And then we can constrain. So that, that's, we know now these are perfectly lined up, which is what you need for a bevel gear, but now we need to constrain the up and down distance. So I'm gonna use the axis of this bevel gear once again, and I'm gonna constrain it to this face. The distance mate and we'll figure them out after and then we got to do the same in the other direction as well so this bevel gear has an axis as well it should if it doesn't we're gonna make it boom let's get some music going these playlists are not long enough on epidemic sound How about Chris Brockhurst's Essentials? We'll go with it. Okay. So now that we have this axis, we can constrain that to this face. And it's gotta be the same because they're the same size bevel gear. And where is the axis on you? Boom. Obviously 20 is too big. So there's probably like proper ways to do this, but I kind of just use trial and error here and it generally works. At the end of the day, you need, you need to make sure that things are gonna be printable. And so the formulas don't always give you that. I actually have this already done for another project that I've worked on, but I'm not gonna open it, it's gonna crash my computer probably. 
Maybe we'll reference it later. I actually do think it's 12 and a half, 12 and a half. Or might even be 12, 12. Might even be 10, 10. So it's just kind of a matter of like trial and error, getting it in. It actually just so happens that this fits without having to adjust it with all these dimensions, which is so nice. It's so nice when that happens. But. That looks a little too tight. The heavy side method for anyone who's done partial fractions. Very scientific term for trial and error. Heavy side method. Maybe we'll go back to 11. All right, I think that's good enough for now. I think maybe what I can do just to hide this body right here and you can see how that looks from the back that looks pretty good to me doesn't look like anything's interfering we might be able to um, just take a cross section on this plane and we can see better how they look. I think it looks like it's just touching, which is for the case of this right now, it's actually perfectly fine because everything's gonna have a little bit of wiggle room to it when you print it. And it's actually sometimes better to have these, these joints a little bit tighter so the gears aren't slipping. These are gonna be pretty strong gear joints, which is good. Especially because this is gonna be attach the base and that should print quite strong. So the next thing we need now is we're going to need a small gear here. And that small gear is going to, we can use this one because we already have it. And this is the gear that the crank is going to be attached to. So we'll figure out the distance for that when we build the panel. And we're going to build the panel like this. So this is kind of, this is called top down engineering where you like, you know what? I'm actually going to take that back. I don't, I don't even know which one is top down, bottom up, but the way I do it is Often I put together the assembly and then I put the pieces, I build new pieces to attach it all together. So that's how I'm gonna do it here. If someone knows what that's called, let me know. I have no idea. So let's go to this piece first. We're gonna take out these bevels. So we're gonna put them in later. Move them all the way down and take it out. Cause now we're gonna build a little panel here. After I take this sip of tea. So good. All right, so we're gonna edit this part in context. And we're gonna use, we're just gonna use this as the reference point. So first I'm gonna create a hole based off of this hole. Cause this, this gear is constrained. It's not moving, it can rotate, but it can't, this shaft can't move. So that's why we can use this as a point. And you gotta be careful when you're doing designs like this because you can find yourself in situations where like you move something and it, everything else breaks but that's and that's why i'm going, going to give this its own dimension even though it's the same as the hole and we're going to use a shaft to hold that in place but yeah so this is going to be a flange first and foremost so 
We'll make that, I don't know, 15 looks, uh, bigger is a little bit better in this case. 18 looks good. Bigger is better because th that way the gear wobbles less when it's all in place. And we'll make our flange 1.5 millimeters. And it says merge, but you can't really merge to anything, so it doesn't matter, we don't need it. So now we're gonna build off of that. So we're gonna need a hole. You know what, actually we're gonna make another flange for this guy. And I'm not gonna constrain that to anything because we can adjust it, but I know the distance it needs to be based on the simple gear equation, which is This has a, a pitch diameter of 45. This has a pitch diameter of 15. So 15 plus 45. Oops, just the 45 plus 45. 15 plus 45. And then you divide that by two. And that's how we know the distance between this gear and this gear. And then we can figure out where we want to put that. So for now, I think I like it kind of on this angle. Yeah, that works for me. So we'll just give it a vertical constraint. And you know, I like my round, nice round numbers. This is gonna be this, this is actually gonna be a different hole size because we need a hex here. So I'll make this hole size and we'll have to adjust this later. But for now, I'll make it 10.4. Maybe the shaft coming through will be 10. This will be, can't really make it much of a different size than what it is right now. So we'll go with, 12 and a half, because I hate making things 13, and I just want to make sure, no, it's too small. I'm going to make this two millimeters. We'll go based on that today. Okay, cool. So now that I have the flanges, we can build our structure that comes out of the base here. I'll do that off of this surface. We'll maybe use this. Use this to the bottom of the base. So the reason I'm printing this as part of the base instead of as like a, its own piece is because I learned from this piece right here that these panels tend to wiggle. I actually ended up gluing it in place for this just because I wanted it to work better. But these eventually you start wiggling and you lose some of your like gear precision that you need. So I'm hoping if I make it part of the base and I make it thick enough, it's not gonna wiggle, it's gonna be pretty solid. And that way having it as a single like cantilevered piece is gonna work just fine. So by thick enough, maybe we'll go like, first I gotta get rid of these, okay. Maybe we'll go out like, that 10 might be thicker than it needs to be. But maybe we'll go with, um, I don't know, like eight. Boom. So the next thing I need to do is, I actually need to cut. So let's hide that piece. Oops. Let's hide that piece we just made for a second. Because I need to cut a space for this gear right here. And yeah, it doesn't need to go that far. That's probably good. So now there's a nice space and it's just so satisfying to do stuff like that in CAD. Because that's gonna print, it's gonna have this perfect clearance. So now what we're gonna do is attach these two pieces. And we're gonna do that by making a sketch here. We're gonna take that that we just made. We're gonna take that line there, that line there. And we're gonna grab these lines here. I don't know why it doesn't want to let me do that, but fine, we'll just grab these lines then. It's all the same. And 
I need to make some trims. Don't need the outline in the end. Trim that, trim that, trim these, and then we can go up to next. Boom, so now that's all one piece. And if we look at this piece on its own, that's how it looks. So I don't love this. One thing I can do is come down on an angle with that to get rid of that. And I think I'm gonna do it. This is like one of those purely aesthetic things. There's like really, it makes no difference, but this is kind of the, the areas where like being an engineer and like being um, a designer, they sort of interplay. So instead of having that like that, we're just gonna like tangent off of that to this part right here. That's gonna go down, that's gonna go across, and then we're gonna give it a dimension because we don't want SolidWorks to break. And we'll give it an angle of 15 because we like round numbers. And this actually needs to be, what's going on now? This needs to be tangent, boom. And that I want connected to that line, which it's saying it's gonna over define the sketch, which I don't understand why, unless it's this guy. Yeah, that's fine. Boom, okay. And then you know what? For the sake of symmetry, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. See how that looks. So now we can adjust this. Oh, that really screwed things up. We'll just do it again, it's easy. It's easy enough. We just grab this, need this line, this line, and this line. We can make some trims. Perfect. So that solves that problem and that looks real good. One thing that I didn't do there was keep the holes so we can make that adjustment really easily. Not with that, it's on this guy. Let's grab that and that and that, boom. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just for printability, I'm gonna make these 45 degree angles because 3D printers like 45 degree angles. We'll do that with a bevel, the chamfer. It's already 45, we'll make it one and a half. That's perfect. So that screws up that. So we can make that a little bit thicker just to fix that problem. Or you know what, actually I can, if I do this, that's better. Perfect. So we're good now. Okay, let's see how that looks in the assembly. And it looks pretty good. So I might just like open this up for aesthetics. Let's do that. Give it a gap, it will use less material. And I'll just do it with like a little offset. Maybe we'll go five millimeters. And there's gonna be an overhang, but that's okay. as long as it's a straight overhang, which it should be, or I'll, I'll put some fillets on it and that should solve the problem 
Screw on them. Boom. That's more than I want. That's that's okay there. So when it prints, it's gonna print this. There's gonna be a gap there. Let's see how it looks. It looks all right, I guess. Maybe I wanna make the whole thing open. Now we're gonna make the whole thing open. So this is, again, like from an engineering standpoint, none of this is necessary what I'm doing other than like it reduces like material cost, but not even that much because 3D printing infills all this stuff in like percentages. So what I'm doing is basically fully aesthetic at this point, but aesthetics are important. So let's offset again. We're gonna offset this. Nope. Offset this. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. Offset this. Offset this. So maybe I'm thinking I'm gonna have like one here, something in the middle. I don't know yet, guys. Let's see. Let's do this one first. Yeah, sometimes you gotta, you know, like, like you gotta put in time to get the aesthetics right. But at the end of the day, it actually works. It works well. Like it makes things look better, and it makes for me like I, I find the sculptures to be a little bit more satisfying that way. But it does take time. I think I might change these offsets to a smaller amount, like 3.5 for those, yeah. We'll see how it looks. And you know, the other thing too, is I can spend all this time doing this aesthetic work and then throw it into the slicer and just decide that like, I really don't feel comfortable with the way it's going to print. And uh, you know, just part of the, it's just part of the game. Okay, let's see how this looks in the end. Or you might even decide you just hate the way it looks. It's another thing that could happen. Aesthetics of engineering. Okay, Let's see how this looks. I can see, I think that looks terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. We'll come back to it because it is not important to finish this thing off and we can just like iterate on the design aspects afterwards. Just ditch the sweater, it's getting warm in here. Okay, let's keep going though. Let's, uh, let's add the crank. And it's basically at that point, like this part's done. You know, it's just like a little of this and that to finish this thing off, but 
Yeah, let's, let's add the crank and then we can come back to it. I think I have a crank in here already. Show. I do. Let's see what our dimensions are on the crank and we can finish, fix the, the hole size and everything. So this is a 12 millimeter crank. It only needs to be eight, let's say point, eight plus nine, so that's going to be nine. And then this is a 10 millimeter hex. We're going to make it smaller. We're going to go with 10 millimeter that, and then we can make this maybe nine. Let's see. Eight point five maybe, as long as it's inside, yeah, we're good there. And then this should be, I think, 7.5 in order to fit our standard C clamps. So this is 8.5, yeah. All right, so this is gonna go here. And now we gotta make this hex on this guy. So this is where the hex is gonna be. Before we even do that, first we're gonna make a axis in the middle so we can mate it later. Boom. Now we can adjust this into a hexagon. And the hexagon is 8.5, so we're gonna make this 8.5 plus three is 8.3 clearance, 8.8. We can strain it. This is one thing that I find so annoying with these hexagons is you have to constrain them. You don't have to, but I like everything to be constrained because I don't want SolidWorks to screw up later. Sometimes like if you don't constrain things, it just makes things up down the road. You're just like, how did that happen? So there's a problem here with this mate, but all we have to do is just adjust this and delete that. And we're going to use the axis constraint to see if we can find it. Can we find it? Ah. Boom. So I also think another thing is, uh, oh, I said it was nine, this needs to be nine and a half. And then uh, we need to fix this. So there's one thing I still like have yet to figure out how to do well with the hexagons is to get these to the right height, but we just use trial and error for now. We'll go eight, let's see how that might be too small. And that looks good. Okay, so now we have our crank. And it gets pretty close to the bottom. So to fix that, I'm going to adjust this. We can make this higher. And it's just, what's gonna end up happening is gonna move it over, but if all else was done right, it shouldn't affect anything as long as I'm not exceeding the dimension that it could be. And that looks like everything's kind of done right. So now we have a little bit more height. We can go even higher still. Ah. 
actually like it better like this. Maybe I can even stack it. But I can't go too high, actually, now that I think about it. Because if it goes too high, it's going to interfere with the weights. So that's the crank at its tallest. So it's these weights, like at their lowest, can't be lower than that. So maybe we're going to bring it back down. A little give and take. And this is where th there might be a flaw in the design here, but I think it's going to be okay. Okay, cool. So our gearbox system is basically done. We just need a shaft here. Make sure that nothing is interfering with anything and that should be fine. Let me just grab a shaft from one of my old projects. Um, nine millimeter shaft. Do I have one in this project? No. Do I have one in this project? Yes. Nine millimeter pin. We're just gonna save that as a copy into our current project, which is this one. Change the name of it. Beautiful. And then we can go back to our assembly. There's a lot of parts open here. Let's close some of them. And we can put that shaft in now. Twenty-two and a half. So I want this to be 22.6. And I can put it in place, see how it looks. So it's just interfering a little bit. And okay, um, that's okay. I think the way for me to fix this, the best way for me to fix this is to make this gap a little bit bigger. And if all else is done right, by making that gap bigger, or just like this little, like from here to here, bigger, that should push everything back the exact amount I need. So let's see, it should all be dependent on this gear. And this is a question like, did I do it right? And we'll find out. And by figuring that out, I think we go here when I add this piece. And I moved it, but we're gonna move it back. So let's just get rid of that move face actually completely. That should push everything back two millimeters. Big money, big money, big money, no whammy. And then that means that this, oh, okay, so I'm actually wrong. That did not solve the problem because the problem is here. So by pushing everything back, I push everything back, but this face stays in the same spot. So how can I fix this problem? There is a couple options. One option. Hmm. Okay, let's just, uh, let's undo what I just did. This didn't solve the problem. So I need to either cut away this section or I need to make this bevel gear bigger. I think we're gonna cut away this section. That's probably the best bet here. This is like a minor problem. It's not gonna affect anything from an engineering standpoint and it's going to make everything work from a design standpoint. And so that's why I feel comfortable doing it. So, how do we do this? Yeah, we definitely have enough space here to cut away some of this material. So if I just take this and this, isolate the two, and we can make the adjustments based on those two pieces. 
So let's do this. We'll edit this part, make a sketch on this, and we're going to grab this face and do an intersection curve. And that's not gonna work. <laughs> we're gonna grab this face and we're gonna maybe have to do a silhouette entity. Yeah, that's what we need. This is really, I'm not going to use this because I don't like this silhouette entity command in this case because a lot could go wrong down the road. But we're going to use this as a reference point. And I'm going to basically just make a cut like this and then on an angle like that. And we're going to use that reference point. And we're gonna go off of this origin. No, nope, we need a little bit of clearance, 64.5. No, that's what it was. 63.5, let's see. It's pretty tight here, guys. It's pretty tight. But we're gonna, we're gonna find a way to make it work. I think it's gonna work fine because this should be constrained, yeah. And this is gonna print this way. Brown, no, it's printing this way. This is the way up. So this can has to be like at least 45 degrees to flat. So vertical is fine. Horizontal, no. We're going to do it with this. This needs to be aligned with this. It is flat for this part. And this we're gonna make perpendicular to this. Don't need that anymore. Let's just see what we get when we do this. And we need to constrain this piece right here. We're gonna constrain it to this, why not? And then we can cut through. We can cut through all of this piece right here. And then this piece here. Yep. And boom, now we have some clearance there. It's not a lot, but clearance is clearance. Thanks, Mr. Morrow Moss, I appreciate it. I don't know why I was in your recommended either, but I'm happy that you're here and I'm happy that you're enjoying it and hopefully learning something. All right, so that looks good. There's like a, a pretty small piece, right? Let's just see how small this is first before we continue. It's funny because at the end of a project, you get so close. These are the things that will get you at the end of a project, but there's always ways around everything. And it's always sometimes easier than you expect. So that's actually like a little too small for me. Because for me, minimum when you're 3D printing anything, you want it to be like at least 0.8, especially because let's just see how this is gonna print. It's gonna print this way vertically that right there is going to be like some really thin walls. And I think to fix that, I'm going to adjust this right here instead of something different because this is, I, I, I invented this, this width right here and it doesn't need to be that wide. And that's just like super clutch right now. So to adjust this, it should just be this one sketch. We adjust one dimension and that should fix everything. Boom. Did that fix it? Maybe we can even make it smaller. Six even. It should be fine. I don't know for sure, but it should be fine. Yeah, and that makes that gap just, just big enough that it's acceptable. 
So sometimes you get weird parts and this is how you get weird parts, but it's all gonna be manufacturable and that's what's important when you're designing a product to be manufactured. If I was designing something to be like just, just straight up for CAD, like straight up for like computer world, it doesn't matter, these little things don't matter, but from a manufacturing standpoint, these things definitely matter. But look at that. So we have the clearance we need now. Everything is gonna be make, like manufacturable. And the next thing you have to make sure when you do something like this is you have to make sure it's gonna be, like you're gonna be able to assemble it. So when I think about how I'm gonna assemble this, we're gonna assemble first this gear system. Then we're gonna put this in, into place. And so that should be no problem right there. Okay, so really there's only one last like main thing for me to do here before I just like clean everything up and get it ready for print. But the main thing I need to do is just design the weights. And I think the weights, I don't know, I have this weird vision for the weights to just be like these like geometric, random geometric shapes. They all have to be the same volume, but I want them to all be like slightly different in just like, I don't know. You know what, for now, let's just design one and then we'll go from there. So there's a couple of things I need to keep in mind is like how big they're gonna be. So I'm thinking maybe they're gonna be like, this whole thing right here from like the bottom, from the bottom of the base to the top of this tarantula tree thing, 210 millimeters, which is like this from here to here. Relative to my face, it's like about seven eighths of a head. So I think I want the weights to be like, maybe like that, which is, 50 millimeters and I want it to be like a random geometric shape. So let's just work on that before this, this is the last thing we really need to do. And then we're gonna put it on the printer and then tomorrow we get to assemble the whole thing and see if it works and make the changes. So, okay, part, how are we gonna do this? So it needs to be printable. So we need to have a surface for it to print on. That will be this surface. And I do it in this orientation just so when I drop into the slicer, it's like, not 15, 50. So when I drop it into the slicer, it drops in in the exact orientation that I want it to be in. So this has to be like some sort of, hmm, do I want these shapes to be geometric or do I want them to be just like round and symmetrical. Do you guys, any of you guys in the chat there, do you have any suggestions for these weights? The weights are basically the things that are gonna be hanging from these strings. They're gonna be all 3D printed as well. I was thinking like a shape like this. Hold on, let me get you on the whiteboard. Marker, I was thinking a shape kind of like, you know, something random geometric, like a rock or like a, a stone, something like that. There's gonna be, a, the, the string is gonna come out of the top like this. There's gotta be a flat surface on the bottom for it to print onto. Or we can have a shape that's just like, kind of like a raindrop. Purely aesthetic here, so I, I really don't know what to do. See, when we look at this, what do we what do we envision the most on this? I actually have an idea. We might be able to um, take this into like paint. And we can just like, oh, you know what? Actually, we can do it like this. So one idea is like some sort of like Geometric shape. And then 
there's going to be like a string like that. And another idea is to have like something round. Birds or fish, eh? I think that's a little too literal for me. Has to be like a little bit more ab abstract than that. What's up, Steven? Is there like a, a way to like abstractly represent a bird or a fish? Maybe we can do like, like something like this. some sort of abstract fish. I don't know. Hmm. I think we need some more music to figure this out. I'm gonna grab a random creator pick like this one right here. This one's called 30 Flirty. Love the names of these, these playlists. Okay. Um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to call it a stream at this point. And tomorrow, when you guys all come back, if you guys come back, all of these parts are going to be printed, including some sort of random shape that I came up with while I was eating lunch for these weights. But... Until then, like right now, like all of this stuff here is basically ready to go. I just have to like add some bevels and stuff. But yeah, tomorrow you're gonna see this, basically it's gonna be ready to put together and we're gonna put it together together. We're gonna put it together together, live on stream at 12 o'clock tomorrow. So it's time to get some parts printing and yeah, thank you guys so much for sticking around. Thank you for joining me today. This is a good time. I'll be back tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern time, 12 o'clock PM Eastern time. And I hope to see you guys there. So yeah, until then. <laughs>